Hi guys, welcome back to yet another super jet lagged but hopefully corona free DIY video here aboard good old Athena. In this week's video I'll continue working on the sink cover in the head and we'll also take a look at the alternator for the DIY generator and probably some other minor stuff. But today is Saturday, I only just got back to Denmark yesterday and this video is going out tomorrow so please forgive me if this video is a little short. As most of you know I've spent the last two weeks with Ava in Los Angeles. I arrived just a few hours before the travel ban was announced. Leaving Ava in Los Angeles was a very hard decision. All I wanted to do was just to stay there. These are very uncertain times and being apart just does not feel right. Because both the US and Denmark have closed their borders, there's now no way for Ava and I to get to each other in case something should happen. Now that is not a good feeling. Why would you then leave, you might ask? Well, for a couple of reasons. For one, because the coronavirus was classified as a pandemic, my health insurance or my travel's insurance, which provides me with health insurance in the US, no longer covers me. That means if I get sick and have to go to the hospital, well, there's absolutely no coverage. The second reason we decided I needed to head back to Denmark now is because all international travel is probably going to shut down very soon. And that means I would be stranded in Los Angeles with Ava. Now, under normal circumstances, that seems pretty much like a dream scenario. But there's no way of knowing when international travel is going to start back up again. And that would mean we would get very far behind with Athena. And that could potentially push our moving aboard Athena by an entire year, which is not something we want. Like I mentioned, this was not an easy decision and it's still weighing quite heavily on the old noggin. So please excuse me if this video is a little bit disjointed. Now things will return back to normal. They're just not normal for right now. Going off of that, I want to say that I hope all of you guys are safe and well. We're no doubt in for some unusual times and uh, I just want to say uh, be safe and uh, take care of your loved ones. The very last thing I did before leaving for the US was to apply a fairing compound to the sink cover here. Now what better way to distract ye old noggin than to get in some glorious sanding. I've already laid out my favorite torture devices here. I've got my manual flexi sander, the electric flexi sander and a duro block. This thing seems like it would have come in very handy on the trip back to Denmark. It ended up taking over 24 hours to get here and it involved four separate flights. That is a lot of time to be stuck around a lot of coughing people. But uh, let's not think about that now. Let's just get to some sanding. In the beginning of that little time lapse, you saw me grab some video of the sink cover. As you could see, it looked pretty rough. And this is what it looks like now. It's in no way perfect, and it is definitely going to need another application of fairing compound. As you can see, there are some defects up here along the edge, down here, up here, and also down here. But it's getting there. In response to the last video, I got a couple of comments saying that I should turn the sink around so that it's facing this way. But actually the sink is designed to be put in place like this, because that way you don't see that unsightly little overflow drainy hole. The last thing I want to do here in the head before I can start putting everything together is to put in a little access panel here so that I can get to the very inside of this area because there's going to be some plumbing back there. And also I figured this was where I was going to place a little insert to hold the toilet paper. My original plan was to place the toilet paper holder on the access hatch. That way I can just build all of that down in the workshop and it would be nice and easy. But sitting here, I can clearly see that the toilet paper holder needs to go up here and the access panel needs to be way down there. Somewhere right around down there. I can still build the toilet paper holding doohickey down in the workshop. It's just going to be a little box that's going to get mounted to the inside of this. Then I'll cut a hole here to allow me to insert a roll of toilet paper. But that of course opens up the question, is the width 
of a roll of toilet paper a universal standard or does it vary from country to country? To the internet. Of toilet paper roll. The average measurement of a roll of toilet paper is 10 centimeter wide. That is certainly a bit of very useful information. Now I can also go ahead and check the inaugural bit of web browsing on the new commode off of the to-do list. So uh, let's head to the workshop. I should have plenty of pieces of scrap back here that we can uh, use for this little doohickey. Feast your eyes on this. There's enough for a lifetime of toilet paper holding doohickeys here. Let's make a quick little sketch of what I want to build. Like I said, it is just going to be a basic box with one small modification maybe. And that could be that the bottom here is slightly slanted so that if any water gets in here, it's just going to run out. But of course, we don't really want water in here because of the toilet paper. But still, it might be a nice feature. To hold the toilet paper, I'm going to put a little wooden dowel here inside of the thing. And of course, that needs to be removable so that you can actually change out the roll. I've borrowed a roll of precious, precious toilet paper from the workshop. The width of this thing is spot on 10 centimeters or just shy of four inches. On a corona related note, having just gotten back from the US, it's kind of surprising to see the amount of toilet paper in the shops over here in Europe. We've got tons of toilet paper. In the US, well, it seemed like you couldn't find a roll of toilet paper to save your life. At least that was the case in Los Angeles. Let's put just a slight angle on the top and the bottom to avoid any issues with the water from the sink. And that is the basic box. Now, as you can hopefully see, there's a little bit of an angle to both the bottom here and the top. That way, if we spill any water and it runs down the side, it shouldn't run into this box and soak the toilet paper. It should just drip off of this edge here. Now I just have to figure out how to secure the blessed roll of toilet paper in here. I've got a wooden dowel aboard obliques that I think I might use, but there needs to be something to hold that in here. Let's get this thing glued together and then tomorrow I can worry about how to actually mount the toilet paper. Because I'm using thickened epoxy and not regular wood glue, I'm not terribly concerned about clamping force here. So I can just apply a little bit of thickened epoxy and then just tape everything together. I'll just leave this sitting here overnight on this piece of plastic to allow the thickened epoxy to cure. In the beginning of this video, I mentioned the alternator for the DIY generator. This setup here is for the cement boat. Now what I'll have aboard Athena is going to be pretty much identical to this. I believe the alternator for the cement boat setup is around 11 kilowatt and I've ordered a slightly smaller one that's 9.5 kilowatts or 9.5 kVA to be exact. Now, the one I've ordered is actually slightly oversized for the Itty Bitty Perkins here. If I'm not mistaken, the Itty Bitty Perkins, which is a 402, puts out just over 9 kilowatts at 3000 RPM. Now, of course, there's going to be some loss before we actually add the shaft on the alternator. So yeah, I'm never going to be able to get the full 9.5 kVA from the alternator. From the people I've talked to, it is my understanding that it is better in a setup like this to go with a slightly overdimensioned alternator. We'll see if that proves to be true. Now you can see the model number of the one I've got here. And uh, this one is a brushed version and it's got AVR. The voltage output from an alternator can be regulated in a few different ways. The most simple way is a capacitor. And then the next step up is what I've got here, which is AVR. I'll go into more detail about all of this stuff in the upcoming generator video, which I am very excited about. For now, I just wanted to show you guys that the alternator has finally arrived. Every time I mention that I'm gonna put a diesel generator aboard Athena, somebody always goes, oh, but you should just use insert name of renewable energy source here, like wind, solar, or what have you. Now we will have a little bit of solar and we'll also have a tow generator for when on the way, but that is just not gonna cover our energy needs. So hence we need the diesel generator and I'm perfectly okay with that. Before succumbing to the urge to take a jet lag nap, there is at least one thing I would like to take care of, and that is to cut the hole for the access panel in the head. 
there's going to be a bunch of plumbing back here. And even though I've got pretty long arms, I can't reach from this opening all the way back there. So that's why I need to have an opening somewhere right around here. That should give me plenty of access. The piece of plywood that's behind the head here is going to get both glued and screwed in place. So that's not going to be removable. But what I could do is simply just to screw the bottom shelf in place. That way, if I ever need to get back there, I'll have the option. I've just come back from a little nap. Before I went down for my glorious nap, I pointed a space heater at the toilet paper holding doohickey. And uh, while the thing epoxy is not fully cured, it's definitely cured enough that I can go ahead and get this mounted in place. The plan is to mount this little box somewhere back here. And then when it's mounted in place, I can go ahead and cut a hole here so I can insert the toilet paper. I would say this cleaned up pretty nice. So now it's just a small matter of figuring out where exactly to mount it. My plan is to adhere the toilet paper holder in place today, and then tomorrow I can go ahead and trim the excess plywood here. A dab of thickened epoxy and a couple of screws should do the trick. Good morning, guys. It is the next day. The toilet paper holding doohickey is now very much a permanent part of the vanity. I'm hoping I'll be able to use this flush trimming bit here on my router to remove the excess plywood and get a nice looking hole. That turned out pretty well. This is a mighty fine hole if I do say so myself. Now there's just a small matter of figuring out how to secure the most precious of papers in here. I've cheated a little bit and uh, this is what I've come up with. These two pieces of plywood are gonna get glued to the inside of the box and then this wooden dowel is gonna hold the toilet paper. I think this is gonna work out great. The toilet paper is out of the way yet conveniently located right where you need it. It's a silly little thing to be excited about, but I really like this solution and uh, I'm excited to see what you guys think about it. But uh, speaking of toilet paper, because of the toilet paper shortage in the US, Ava and I added a tushy to her toilet. It's kind of like a little after Margaret bidet situation. I was a little skeptic at first, but it worked out really well and it cut way down on the toilet paper consumption. Now something like that would be very useful aboard a boat with a semi-small holding tank. Less toilet paper means more room in the holding tank for other stuff and it'll also mean less problems with clogging. So that seems like an all around positive. I'll see if I can find an alternative to the tushy that fits onto the marine elegance. Actually, I'm not sure that a tushy won't fit, but uh, I'll look into it. If I can't find something that fits on there, then I might take a stab at building something myself next winter. I mentioned that this video was going to be a little bit light in content and also a little bit shorter than normal because I only had a very short amount of time for shooting it. I think we're just around the 14 minute mark right now, so it is definitely a little bit shorter than normal. I'm going to spend a little bit of time while this is rendering, just applying the last bit of fairing compound to the sink cover and also get started on figuring out how to mount the alternator to the generator. It would be really cool if I could get the generator up and running over the next couple of weeks. It's still going to be about two months or so until it's warm enough for me to start working on the deck hole joint on the outside of the boat. Once that happens, that is going to become my first priority. But for now, I can still shuffle around some small little projects that are going to be fun. So like, for instance, the generator and the heating setup. So yeah, we'll uh, see what happens next week. I want to end this video by saying I hope all of you guys are well and being safe. The world will return to normal at some point. It's just for now, everything are a little bit unordinary. So yeah, be safe out there. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.